Welcome to Career Choices. I'm your host, Elizabeth Gia. On this program, you'll meet accomplished individuals sharing their background, experience, and career path. Today, we're exploring information technology, or information management. The career field has been in hot demand, especially in the past decade. The field will continue to grow in the next 10 years. Today's guest, Ms. Bernadette Garrett, has more than 20 years of information technology experience. First, she served in the U.S. Air Force, and now she's working in private consulting. Ms. Garrett has a Bachelor of Science in Information Systems Management and a Master of Science in Information Resources Management. She's been a manager in network operations and communications. Let's welcome Ms. Bernadette Garrett. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So let's start out with asking about your role today in IT. What's your typical workday like? Because I own my own LLC, I try to help businesses develop a strategic plan in order to implement their systems, meaning I want to help them with project management and program management to and allow their resources to be best utilized for them to be aligned with their business objectives and goals. So it's very customized and tailored to each client? Correct. Correct, because every business is different and every business has different technological needs. Mm. So it seems like certainly you've had a variety of exposures to different systems and environments. So let's go back to the beginning. What made you decide to go into IT and how did you start? As you stated in your introduction of me, I started in the military. I was an information manager as well as information technology and communications, a <laughs> lot of different titles that I held, but it all surrounded information technology. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started and I learned and I grew. How do you break into this field for people who are thinking about going into the IT world? It's pretty easy, I believe. A lot of people don't know how much technical skill that they have. Mm -hmm. Mostly users, meaning users of IT, whether it's a video game or something that they're doing online that is for their personal use, can be translated into something that they can, whether it's a website, something that they can build a profession around. Mm -hmm. So people don't even know that they are developing the skills that could potentially lead them into a career field of information technology. So when you are thinking or trying to break into IT, uh, what kind of tips would you suggest in terms of, you know, types of education or topics or what kinds of things should you pay attention to? Actually, I would, number one, look at what your interests are. Mm -hmm. And as with anyone else, check out Google mm -hmm. to Google whatever that information technology or that technical job that you're kind of interested in, whether it's a web developer, mm -hmm. it could be cybersecurity, mm -hmm. it could be a lot of different variations of information technology. I would advise a person to, number one, look it up, look at what the requirements are for that particular career because it does vary. Mm -hmm. They are not all the same, but, but they just fall under the information technology umbrella. Okay. Look at what those qualifications are look at the certifications that can go along with it. Mm -hmm. It could be Network Plus, could be A Plus, Computer A Plus. There are a lot of different certifications out there for people to engage in and begin to look at what feels right for them in information technology. So with that being said, once somebody starts out, do you have a pay range for an IT professional you can engage at? <laughs> well, currently, of course, you have Glassdoor, you have mm -hmm. PayScale, all of these different other medians to be able to look at the actual salary range. But at, at minimum, they could potentially make 80000 a year. It depends on your skill and experience. And again, looking at those certifications again, that could be a contributing factor to what a salary, kind of salary that you can Get, get. I'm, I'm glad you talked about certifications. Uh, I know you have one of them, PMP, and wanted to explore that certification. How do you get it? What's involved in earning that certification? And what it was like when you took it? Well, PMP, which is Project Management Professional, mm -hmm. 
a lot of the work that I did in IT surrounded around projects, projects that needed information technology. So I was interested in uh, PMP based off of the kind of projects that I did. And I just looked it up, Project Management Institute, and looked at the qualifications for that. Um, some of the things that they look at is your experience along with the well, actually your experience in project management, that's what they're really looking at. And then, you, of course, you have the dreaded, with anything else, exam. I see. So when you went through it, what was it like for you? I did my research with anything, and I always recommend that for anyone that's going to do a certification, look at what the requirements are. Like I just stated, for PMP, you have to have a certain level of experience, and then you have to take an exam. Now, look at the exam. What? It, the exam entails and what kind of prep courses that can prepare you in order to achieve that certification. Okay, wonderful. So then now that you have your certification and it seems like you have said IT is an umbrella term, there's so many different you know, details and specializations within it. Can you dis describe briefly a distinction between certain titles? Uh, what is the distinction between, for example, information technology management and information management? Or, you know, those titles that have a few different words and could mean vastly different things. Now, information technology, by definition, has to do with the planning and designing of the hardware components, the design and software of a, tech, a system, mm -hmm. a computer system, mm -hmm. or a network system. Information management really predates information technology because we're dealing with data. Now, this is before computers really ruled. We still did information management, whether it's the filing of the paper or uh, the distribution of correspondence. That's all information management. Now, with the evolution of technology, we're now able to do it more efficiently mm -hmm. and under, you know, under the actual architecture of technology. Now, far as the difference, <laughs> think information technology, systems, hardware, components, software. Mm -hmm. Information management, just think paper. <laughs> now, not that we use paper anymore, just think data and how you move and course, how you distribute correspondence as well as how you uh, archive it. Mm -hmm. I understand now. Thank you. So in terms of now your career in the private consulting world, uh, you had mentioned earlier that you interact with multiple clients and you are tailoring the IT uh, you know, resources based upon their needs. In terms of your skill set, what can you tell us about what do you think are the most important skills or knowledge that has attributed to your success in your 20 years of experience in this field? Of course, studying first. If you're not familiar with uh, information technology or the components that are vital to the distribution as well as the utilization of the architecture, uh, you have to make sure that you understand it, you study, you, that's where it's some, it helps with the certifications because it helps you understand the intricate details necessary for a system to operate. Mm -hmm. And we're not just talking about hardware, then you have to look at the resources, whether it's manpower or uh, other logistics involved to put the system together. Mm -hmm. Understanding that as well as how would I put it, communicating yes. what those things are. And I would say as far as experience and one of the skills that you want to make sure you hone is the communication skills, meaning being able to understand and convey mm -hmm. the actual needs of the requirement that the client is expressing to you and you're expressing your solution to that client. So all of it is study as well as putting your communication skills to work. So it seems like sometimes your clients may know what they want on a general level, but you have to know it on mostly a very detailed level, technical level, but also communicate it in a general way so that your client understands what you're doing Absolutely. for them. 
uh, well, that's very good to hear that it definitely takes probably years of experience to get to that level. Uh, you are certainly the subject matter expert. Uh, how do you even get your clients? Well, I look at what requirements are out there because as the, like you said before, the information technology field is growing mm -hmm. and especially security of these infor te uh, information technology structures and one of the biggest requirements is security. So it's really not hard mm -hmm. to find clients that mm -hmm. need help in determining what kind of security measures that they need to implement in order to safeguard their data as well as their systems. Do you feel like since this field is growing so rapidly that you have to keep up with the latest or you know the evolution of this field? Absolutely. When it comes to, and I will transfer that over to security because there's always a threat to the network or the data that a company owns and they've all oh, after you fix a problem they Something. try to find another vulnerability in which they would try to ex exploit that okay thank you so now it's time for us to take a break stay tuned and we'll be right back every book is an adventure waiting to come to life. Visit new worlds. Encounter new friends. And discover the power of reading. Go to read.gov to read A Princess of Mars, the first novel to feature John Carter. A new world awaits. Read. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? One in 195 million. The odds of the child being diagnosed with autism? One in 110. I'm Jamie McMurray and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Yeah. Salad on Saturday, fruit on Friday, bubble ball Thursday. Water, water, Wednesday, touch your toes Tuesday. Let's move Mondays, what is next Sunday? 60 minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Welcome back to Career Choices. In today's program, we've invited Ms. Bernadette Garrett to talk about her 20-year career in information technology. Welcome, Mac. So earlier we were talking about your one certification, the PMP, Project Management Professional. That's very important to have, it seems, to excel in this field, IT. And then there's also another certification, I understand, called the Information Technology Infrastructure Library. ITIL, correct? Correct. So talk to me about that certification and what that entails if you want to get one. ITIL mostly, it mostly deals with IT services. Let's say a company hired me to begin to help them develop a plan for implementation of a system. Mm. And with my experience with ITIL, I will look at processes. The process is necessary to look at how that system would work, meaning I would start off looking at the type of system it is. And once I look at the type of system, then I will look at the goals and objectives of that company and how that system will align with that, whether it's because the medical field has a different set versus a construction company. Mm -hmm. So for ITIL, those that are using ITIL, that has a process in which it looks at the services, um, IT services, and how it would be implemented with that company. So PMP and ITIL are these two certifications. You have both. How have they both helped or allowed you to excel in this field? 
I would say because, number one, my experience and aligning that with the best practices of both of those um, certifications for PMP. Mm -hmm. There's uh, best practice when it comes to processes mm -hmm. from communication as well as the communication as well as some of the other um, processes that were that are followed in the PMP mm -hmm. guideline. And the same thing with ITIL when it comes to um, IT services as far as developing a strategic process in, in which to implement that particular system in accordance with the business objectives of that company. So for people who are watching, would you recommend that they look into these certifications, prepare and take the test to earn these certifications uh, versus on the job learning and advancement, practical expertise? Uh, wh which side would you I'd advise? Say, I would say a combination of both mm -hmm. because what a certification does is give you a, it's a, like a stamp of, of approval mm -hmm. with regards to the experience that you may already have in the actual field that you're um, using with regards to information technology. So how many years of work did you do before you tried to get these certifications? Actually, I did about 15 years. I wasn't aware of the certifications or how they could potentially benefit me um, in my career. And once I took a look at that, and I said, I do that. Mm -hmm. um, project management, I do that all the time, mm -hmm. as well as um, ITIL when it comes to the services piece, looking at the different components of how a system or the service of IT is implemented into the business I was like, I do that as well, mm -hmm. so let me look at how these certifications can enhance what I already know. It seemed like they were both in alignment once you had the understanding that your day-to-day -day work aligned with these certifications. And that came with just studying and researching and seeing mm -hmm. what certifi certifications align with what I did or what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I be could begin looking at, well, how can I get better acquainted mm -hmm. with this particular subject matter? And I'll look at the actual certification and, okay, this is the things that I need to begin to look at and practice. So from our interview so far, I hear the words study and research a lot. It seems like your job is pretty cerebral. Uh, is it stressful day to day? What are your work hours like? Work hours depends on the requirements of the client and nothing always goes right, but at the same time, proper planning um, can help it be less stressful. I don't have a, it all depends on personality. I'm uh, probably a, mostly a stress-free person because I like to plan ahead. But when things do become a little uh, restrictive when it comes to timelines and budget, I just take a step back and go back on those core principles and best practices that I've learned throughout my experience and through my certifications. So in terms of work-life balance, what is that like for you? Or is that just a phrase, work-life balance? <laughs> I think for me, I, I tend to try to do more of the balance. But again, of course, it all, it's, it's subjective. Every individual is different. I'm more on the balance of having a life, not working all the time. But it's, um, it's, it takes a lot of thought and planning. <laughs> so when it comes to your current role, you are in private consulting with your LLC. Mm -hmm. uh, and before that, you did say you uh, thank you so much you've served in the U.S. Air Force. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about the major differences between your work uh, when you were in the U.S. Air Force versus now in your own private consulting company. I think a lot of it has to do with freedom. I get to choose my client rather than it being, uh, being required. And a lot of it has to do with me directing, being able to get involved with different projects that I would not normally be able to, being a, a military member. What do you find most satisfying or enriching about your work? 
helping people do their job better and feeling good about the things that they're trying to achieve, whether it's in systems or just achieving some of the objectives that will help a community. Because it ranges from nonprofits to um, other, uh, other private industry. Things that you may not like about your work so far. <laughs> Well, you mentioned work-life balance. <laughs> Sometimes it's not easy to get that balance because of the hours, but because it's something that I feel really um, good about, I like doing, mm. that it, uh, it kind of evens out, it balances out the good with the bad. The good with the bad. Mm -hmm. Any memorable experience or memory you'd like to share with us um, about your work experience? I think there was one project that we worked on that we had to um, put together a a host of systems. We were under a tight budget crunch mm -hmm. and it was the rallying the rallying of all of the members of all the technicians mm -hmm. coming together, brainstorming, thinking of ways to make this happen for this particular client and it was a camaraderie that we had. It was a lot of things that, um, that came together with this particular project that helped us to um, not, not, not only know each other better, but take our skills to another, and experience to another level. So it was kind of like um, you're in a hot pressure cooker, but mm -hmm. everybody rallied and worked together when it counted. Yes, absolutely. That must have been great once you finished. <laughs> yes, and it was very satisfying for the client as well. That's great. So any of these um, memorable moments where you face some challenges at work that you'd like to share? Well, there are always challenges, and mostly those challenges come with money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the budget, because in this industry, although we understand the importance of security and information technology, mm -hmm. They, the budget still, the budget that the client or the business puts forth does not always meet the need mm. or meet the need that, of that requirement that they have. And they're not always so easily, they do not easily want to spend the money necessary to implement that particular um, countermeasure. And I think when you say challenge, that's, that's challenging. And the challenge is to convince them mm -hmm. that this is a, an investment that is worthy of, uh, worthy of their time and uh, funding. So how do you convince them then? You kind of show them this is what will happen if you do not mm -hmm. um, implement this particular measure. Mm -hmm and then they can weigh that cost benefit balance and normally that they you know most will go ahead and put in the investment that's necessary to implement that so that's how you kind of get over that hump but again it all depends sometimes the company doesn't have the money and they have to think of workarounds mm. when you say you know these companies it ranges from nonprofits, you said, to other types, maybe uh, government. Uh, when you're looking at these clients, they must be a range of where they are in their technology infrastructure. Is it very wide ranging in, in their uh, sophistication? <laughs> what is the landscape like when you're going out there and meeting these clients? It can be as you. It could be as little as a just a website, and uh, it could be just a website and the needing of a a, a more secure uh, system to be able to work their uh, begin to work some of the issues that or the problems that they're trying to fix from a big corporation that wants to um, do something worldwide far as implementing a system worldwide that can communicate worldwide. Mm -hmm. So it varies. It varies from the smallest and to the largest thing you can think of. So with it being so wide ranging, how does that make your, it must make your work uh, pretty dynamic and interesting. It's not the same type of situation or scenario. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
for people who are watching and who are thinking about going into IT, what kind of advice would you give for uh, people who are looking into going into this field, uh, maybe starting their own LLC or working with a company? What are your thoughts? I would say start off with something that, number one, you like or you're interested in mm -hmm. and be able to master that whether it's building a website, whether it's coding a program, which is very popular right now. Mm -hmm. um, there's a huge field with da data analytics that's growing, that needs to understand, we talked about information management, um, as the data grows, mm -hmm. you need to be able to understand how, what that data means for that business. So that's a growing field. A person needs to take a look at what interests them and mm -hmm. that way they'll probably stick to it and then align that with what's the, what's the market need because there are several different types of need, business needs. Mm -hmm. So if they're looking at that, number one, find out what it is that you're interested in, master that, and then find a way or a market to be able to insert yourself in there, whether it's at a uh, entry level position at a company or depending on what your skills are, of what did you've built. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, you have to take the time to look and research. Thank you. Well, that's very good and very helpful to our audience. So thank you very much. And it seems like the IT field will definitely be growing. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing your experience here today. And this ends our program. We appreciate our guest, Ms. Bernadette Garrett, for sharing her experience and accomplishments. And thank you for joining us. Hope Ms. Garrett's stories inspire and encourage you to explore different career choices and make an impact in our community. And if you have any feedback or comments, or if you would like to share your experience, email us at qip.career.choices at gmail.com. And we'll see you next time on Career Choices. Mm -hmm.